Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to a new video. So in this one, I want to discuss the topic of how much money you actually need to get started in dropshipping and give it a proper go. So there's a lot of numbers floating around, especially in different Facebook groups like $200. But in this video, I want to actually well, number one, show you inside my ad manager account from when I first started so you can see exactly how much money I spent and how much money it returned me because it really is difficult to give you a bang on number that's going to suit everyone because ultimately it will come down to how successful your marketing campaigns are. So, for example, when you first get started, the very first kind of campaign you invest in might be a hundred dollar Instagram influencer and that might return you a thousand dollars in revenue, in which case that's going to set you up to start pretty much and go in any direction you want. However, you may choose to start with Facebook ads and it might take you $1,000 before you get enough data through your ad sets, before you start to realize what audiences are working until you start to scale things and actually see a profit come back in. So in this video then, I'm gonna show you inside my ad manager account, show you how much money I invested when I first started. And then I'm gonna give you a ballpark number and just discuss the strategy behind how I would go about spending that money. But before we jump into it then, I just wanna quickly mention a couple of things actually. Number one is is a massive thank you to you guys and everybody who watches these videos and engages with them and watches them to the end. Recently, I hit over 6,000 subs and it's all thanks to you and the support. So thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. And please, please, please do keep it coming. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please do make sure you do. Um, and number two then, in every video, as always, I am giving away a free one-to-one -one consultation call with me. So if that's something you might want to win, just a chance to talk to me one-to-one -to -one, um, and ask me any questions you might have, then all you simply have to do to enter the draw is like the video and leave a comment down below and if you commented on my previous video just make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one where the winner will be announced and with that being said then guys let's get straight into it hey what's up guys here we are in my ad manager account then so this is like the very first month i started advertising in fact i think there was one date in june so i'll just show you june quickly um so here we go, there's like one single day I spent like five pounds my very first day. So the first proper month was July 2016. That's where I'm gonna start this video from. And you can see then total spend was 391 pounds for a return of 455 pounds. So with the 1.16 ROAS as well, as you can imagine, I wasn't profitable. So even though I'd spent 400 pounds on ads, I'm not gonna bother talking about the Shopify plan side and app side because it's neither here nor there. For the very first month, or certainly for the very first few months, you're probably looking at about $50 a month, including the basic Shopify plan. You don't need an advanced one, just the basic one is absolutely fine. Until you hit about 10 or 15 grand, it's either one of two of those numbers, then it doesn't make financial sense to upgrade your plan. So just stick to the basic one, um, get your basic apps like Obelo, um, a decent upsell app, a decent review app, and that's pretty much all you need then to begin with. And it's, it's gonna be about $50 per month for the first few months until you start to make some decent money. So I'm just basing that on that $50 a month, that's gonna get you your plan and the necessary apps that you need to begin with. So I started with Facebook ads then, I didn't even look at Instagram influencers until about six months later. Um, I'm a numbers person, I like looking at numbers, spotting patterns, so I've always stuck with Facebook ads ever since I started three years ago now. Um, so yeah, back to my very first month then, 400 pounds in ads, 455 revenue, um, and if I remember rightly, I lost about 200 pounds, but at that point I didn't care because I was starting a new business, I was excited to see people were spending money with me, um, So, and it showed the potential as well, 500 pound, back then especially was still a lot of money to me. So the fact that I had that potential there spurred me on to basically just keep funding this drop shipping business with my nine to five wage and just keep going. So in this first month then, my business cost me around about 200 pounds. Now I know you're gonna say I spent 400 on ads, but I made all of that back plus a little bit. And then the product cost was about 150 pounds. Back then I used to work on kind of like the ratio of 30, 30, 30. So 30% 30 on product cost, 30% on marketing cost, and then 30% profit. However, today, with Facebook ads being a bit more expensive, then you can expect to pay a bit more than 30% of the product cost. Now that's only on low ticket items. With higher ticket items, then obviously it's not gonna be as high as 30%. Um, especially in today's age with Facebook ads being more expensive, then I always recommend people try and leave at least 15 pounds for a cost per purchase 
and still be able to make profit. So selling products in the kind of like 25 pound range and upwards, up to about 40 pounds, I usually find is pretty much the sweet spot on Facebook nowadays. So with that being said, then that is my very first month. Um, it cost me about 150, 200 pounds, included in all the different Shopify apps and the basic plan, etc. I spent 400 on ads, but I've, as you can see, I got all of that back plus a little bit. So the only kind of expense for that first month then, because the Facebook ads were paid for themselves, was the product cost on AliExpress and 30% of 450 pounds was about 150 pounds plus 50 pounds for the first month on the Shopify app plan. And that was my very first month. Moving into month number two, then this is where things started to get a lot better for me because my business started producing a profit. So essentially my business wasn't costing me any more money because it was making more money than it was costing me. So as we can see, I spent a bit more on ads, 530 pounds and it returned 1200 pounds with a 2.41 ROAS. And if I just show you month number three quickly, um, things continue to improve fortunately enough for me as well. You can see I spent 1600 on ads, 5.4 revenue with a 3.27 ROAS. At this point, as you can imagine, I was pretty happy with things, um, but that's back then then. You've probably noticed the date was 2016, so we're, we're talking nearly three years ago now. What does this all mean then if you wanna start drop shipping in 2019? So what I'm gonna do now is go into the breakdown where I'm gonna show you the number in which I recommend you guys save up until you have this number before you start your drop shipping business and then give you a guide and strategy in how I would go about spending that money. Hey, what's up guys? So this is the strategy then mapped out day by day. I'm gonna take you through it step by step and then at the end, tell you why this strategy actually works and the kind of rules then that it's based on. So starting from the very top, as a minimum recommendation, I suggest you wait and save up at least $500 to start your drop shipping business. Now, I understand this will be quite a lot of money for people, but one of the advantages to drop shipping is that it is low startup costs. I can't really think of any other business model apart from social media marketing agency where you'll need actually less money than this to start a significant business, especially in like the last five or 10 years. Certainly before the internet, the most people required a premises, um, they had to pay people from the very beginning. So you were talking tens of thousands of pounds to start a business. So $500 might seem like a lot, but don't be in a rush, take your time, look at other ways to make money, perhaps sell things around the house, just try and save up as much money as possible. Um, as it says there, that's $500 as a minimum. The more you have, then the better chance you'll have to succeed because the more money you can test with and play with on Facebook. So if you're starting with $500 then, um, kind of like the minimum requirements in which you'll need before you can start advertising and selling products. Number one is the Shopify plan, just go for the basic one, $29 is absolutely fine. Until you hit, I believe, 10 grand in revenue um, a month, then it doesn't work out financially viable or advantageous um, to increase your plan. Number two then, there's kind of like three apps which I recommend you have as a minimum before you start. Number one is Obolo, so you have that cross integration with AliExpress. Number two is an upsell app because if you can convert a good upsell, um, certainly at 10, 20%, that can make a significant difference to your average order value and therefore your profitability. Um, one kind of quick little tip is just make sure you choose an upsell product um, that is from the same supplier as your trigger product or the product you're advertising. That way you're gonna save that Usually it's about £2.50 carriage charge, which is quite a significant profit um, effect on your profit margin. And number three, make sure you get a decent review app, um, something like Looks Reviews. You get a free trial with most apps, um, but just to kind of make sure you do have enough money in the bank to pay for these, just set aside $50 for the first month. So this leaves then $450 left for marketing. So $450 then, how are we going to spend it? Day number one and two is gonna be all about testing. I've spoken about testing a lot of my channel recently and how I use traffic campaigns to test different audiences because it's cheaper data. So that's what this premise is based on. I want you to create a traffic campaign. I want you to have 20 ad sets. So we're testing a ton of different audiences here and just make sure then these ad sets have unique interests, their unique audiences. Just make sure you're not testing the same audience twice. Um, you want that audience size then to be around the kind of like 1 million mark. Um, you can flex interests, you can flex it with online shopping, flex it with engaged shoppers, just try and get it around that 1 million mark. Now, if it's 2 million, it's not a big deal, but to begin with, just don't go out and target audience sizes of like 5, 10, 15 million um, people. Daily budget then, I want each ad set to be set at $2.50 per day. After two days then, this will give you a total spend of $100 over the two days, um, which leaves you $350 left to scale. 
Now, the reason I want you to start with the traffic campaign, I've spoken about it tons before in other videos, so I'm only gonna go over it briefly, is number one, the data is cheaper, you can reach more people, and the more data you have, then the easier it is to set that kind of median, that mean average, um, to give you a comparison of whether an ad set's performing well or whether it's performing badly. So. If you have 20 different ad sets, 20 different audiences, the main piece of data I want you guys to focus on is the cost per link click. And then that's clearly gonna give you um, an idea of which audiences are performing the best. So at the bottom end, you might have a cost per link click of like over a dollar, but then at the top end, the best performing ones, you might have a cost per link click of say 10 cents or 20 cents. So obviously this one that's performing at 10 to 20 cents cost per link click, then obviously that audience is a lot more engaging and has a lot more interest in your product. And therefore it warrants being invested in even more in a conversion campaign um, and given that extra budget to try and scale it and actually start bringing in some sales. So that's what I want you guys to focus on. Run it for two days, $2.50 per day. That's $100 total spent, which leaves you $350 then left to scale the ad sets that are performing the best. One important thing as well is make sure you're looking at the cost per link click and not just all clicks because a link click is a lot higher value event than just somebody who clicks on your ad. Somebody who's actually taken the time, actually clicked on your URL, your link, and gone to your site, then obviously they've shown more interest than somebody who's just simply clicked on your ad to open it up in bigger view. So just make sure you focus on the cost per link click because that's gonna give you a better representation of whether people are actually interested in your product or not. So all that being said, then moving on to day three, then this is where things get interesting and where we start to make some money. So take the three best ad sets in. So out of the 20 audiences you've been running, 20 ad sets, take the three best performers and duplicate them into a CBO purchase campaign. I forgot I left that out into a CBO purchase campaign because now we know which audiences are most responsive. Now we wanna tell Facebook, right, we don't just want traffic to our store, we actually wanna drive people who are going to make a purchase. And out of this audience, which has shown the most interest, now find the people within those people that are more likely to make a purchase, if that makes sense. Before you set the campaign to go live then, what I want you to do is take each one of those three ad sets and duplicate it two times. So you have ad set number one, duplicate it twice, ad set number two, duplicate it twice, ad set number three, duplicate it twice, and this is gonna give you nine ad sets in total in your CBO campaign. Now, the reason I want you to do this is because I've been experimenting recently with this whole within the audience you'll have different kind of sections and groups of people and every time you duplicate an ad set then it's going to be kind of like targeted to a different group and segment because you could spend say $50 testing a specific audience and get zero results but then if you duplicate it and have two ad sets in two different segments of that audience now Facebook hasn't confirmed this yourself themselves but this is just something I've been experimented with recently that's been working really well for me so this is why I want to pass it on to you guys so if you're not clear on any of this by the way make sure you just leave a comment down below um, and hopefully I can answer your all your questions so nine ad sets in total then in your CBO. I want a $50 daily budget and I want you to run it for three days. Now the reason I want you to run it for three days is because purchase campaigns take a while for them to optimize and actually start performing um, efficiently. You might find that in two days you'll get zero sales but then in one day you'll get um, a decent amount of sales. You might even be profitable and if you are, then what that shows you is a really strong intent that those ad sets and this campaign then has potential. So once you've run it for three days, um, just to kind of quickly tot up how much we spent. We spent $250 spent, so that now leaves us $200 left to scale the ones that are showing the most promise and the most potential. So after you've run the campaign for three days, then what I want you to do is go over all of the ad sets and just kill the ones that are performing well. So the ones that are actually bringing in sales. Because we spent $150, we want to see some sales by now. We want to start recouping that money we're spending on ads. So any ad set that hasn't produced a sale for you, just kill them, keep the ones that are producing, and then just let it keep running. Keep it at $50, run it for another three days, and again, if they keep performing, then that's when you start to increase the budget. And by now, um, you'll start to see money coming in the door, certainly if you've got PayPal links, and you'll be able to reinvest that money into more ads, um, and then just slowly but surely scale up that CBO campaign. And that is essentially what's been working really well for me recently. Now, so that's the strategy itself. As I mentioned earlier, any questions on that at all, please make sure you do leave a comment down below. I get back to every single person. But then what is the thinking then behind the strategy? Why does this actually work? Number one, 
is you have to commit to Facebook ads in order to succeed. So this includes your budget and this includes your time. Time and time again, I see people spending $5 per day on ad sets and they'll test a ton of different ad sets, but they're all at $5 per day and they can work up a total bill of about $1,000. But because they've not had that commitment to, and that confidence to try and scale something and just like whack a budget of $50 per day on it or $100 per day on it and give it a chance to actually properly succeed, then they never have. Facebook works on past data. It needs time to optimize. So if you don't commit to the ones that you have confidence in, and that's why it's important to run these traffic campaigns so you can see exactly which audiences are committing and which ones have that interest. So unless you have, unless you do commit to those ad sets, then you're never gonna give it time to optimize or budget to optimize and actually see those results. And then the second main reason is the broad testing lets you find winning audiences quickly and cheaply. So by using traffic campaigns, you get further reach. Um, so therefore you get more data for your money and therefore you can see which audiences are actually interested in your ad, in your product um, by spending less money effectively. It allows you to test, it's almost 10%. So by testing 20 different ad sets in order to get the same kind of results in a purchase campaign, testing audiences this is, then you'd have to test almost 200 ad sets or pay the price of 200 ad sets to get the same amount of data back. That really is how much cheaper it is. And like I mentioned earlier, is that when it comes to being successful at Facebook ads, it's about testing as much as possible. Sometimes I'll be go just crazy and test like 50 ad sets within a traffic campaign, because the more you test, then the better averages and the better mean you have. Um, I've used this example before. So the only reason that we know that Usain Bolt is the fastest man in the world is because we've seen him race against all the other best runners in the world and therefore we know he is. It's the same with your ad sets. The only way you'll know if an ad set is performing the best is if you have other ad sets to compare it against. So this is why the testing stages within Facebook ads is just really, really important. So anyway, with that being said then guys, I feel like I've talked on and rambled on enough. Um, hopefully you guys have learned something new. If you go out and test this strategy, make sure you come back and let me know what kind of results you get. And of course, any questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed the video then, please do make sure you leave a like. And of course, if you want that chance to win a one-to-one -one call with me, then all you have to do is simply leave a comment down below. And with that being said then, let's get into announcing the winner of the previous video. What's up guys, here we are then on my previous video. Do $5 Facebook ads still work in 2019? a very important video. If you haven't watched it yet, please do make sure you go and check it out. Anyway, let's get on to announcing the winner. So I'm just gonna take the URL, head over to our random comment picker. These competitions are 100% random, 50 unique comments, which is absolutely awesome. So thank you very much for the support. And the winner of the previous video then is Mario. So thank you very much, Mario, for your comment. Please do reach out on Instagram and we can get that call arranged. And guys, if you just wanna get straight down to business and book a call right away, you can actually do so. Just make sure that you check out the links in the video description below. And with that being said then, thanks again for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next one.